All right, peace and blessings to whoever might be listening and watching out there. My name is Butch Gibson, and this is all about a presentation that I like to call My Hidden Figures. What is My Hidden Figures about? It's about My Hidden Figures. And first, let me just tell you, this is what I call a TED Triangle talk. Every now and then I get these messages, these invitations that ask if I would like to enter to be in some sort of TED talk. And I'll say each and every time that I actually submit my application, but I don't always get accepted. And this is, this is no, <laughs> no exception. But we had this thing called a TED Triangle that had a job in the past, and it was all about training and development. And we used the letters TED, so we would train, and then we would evaluate that training so we could develop further training. So I'm kind of doing a spin on the TED talk or the TEDx talk and calling this the TED Triangle talk. And my whole point of this whole my fit, hidden figures thing is just that I saw the movie, Hidden Figures. And it was wonderful to see those hidden figures come, come to light, come to the big screen, and we got to learn about those, those folks that those, I, I, not necessarily characters, but those, those people in our past that we, we might not have have learned about in history lessons, you know? So, had a nice movie. Anyway, I just wanted to bring about the, the fact that the hidden figures don't have to necessarily work at Nassau. They don't have to necessarily be on the big screen. They could be right next door. They could be right in your backyard. And I created this little, or I'm trying to create this little movement. I'm trying to use some hashtags. So, for this year, I'm using hashtag 2018, hashtag hidden figures, hashtag my hidden figures, hashtag black, History Matters, Black Her Story, Black Lives Matter, Black History Month, even Black Panther. I'm trying to go all out and hit all hashtags if I possibly can. And what kind of started this thing is that, like this shirt that I happen to have on right now is AskPat, AskPat.com. Back in 2016, I got a nice email from a nice guy, Pat Flint. Now, he's all the way across the country from where I'm at. I happen to be in Ohio. And now Pat Flynn sent out this email message back in 2016. And in that email message, he talked about, hey, how can you start off a, a 2017 new year and be motivated? And what his offer was, if you click on a particular link, that he would then in turn send you a PDF of motivational content from various motivational people, motivational speakers and influencers from around the world. Well, I received that message and it was great. And, and you know, also on this, this, this whole Ask Pat, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fulfilling an obligation because I sent in a, a question to Ask Pat and my question was selected. He used it on the show, so I got the t-shirt. And my agreement was that I would make sure that I present the t-shirt. So if you're listening on audio, you may not be able to see. If you're watching on video, hopefully you'll be able to see my askpat.com t-shirt. But anyway, so Pat sends me this message. It was all nice and everything. And I, and I thought about it as I, I printed it out. And I thought, you know what? All these people, all these motivators, all these influencers are from anywhere and everywhere around the country. I don't necessarily know them. Now, I will say that I know a few people. And I'm cool with who I know, right? But I didn't know, I might have known of some of these people that were in this, in this PDF file, but I didn't know them personally. And so I thought about it, like, hey, I'm gonna try to do something. I'm gonna try to let folks know who I am inspired by. And after, so, so in that same time frame, right around in there, I saw Hidden Figures. And I was like, wow, that's a great movie. And I wonder if I can do a little spin on that. So my thought was, and, and my action was, that every day during the month of February, and that happened to be 2017, and now again in 2018, every day in the month, I'm going to highlight a person that may not be on the silver screen, but may just be in my life. And so with, with that, in my, or somebody, you know, someone that may have influenced me personally. So with that in mind, I appreciate Pat, but uh, I'm gonna just take a moment here and recognize another influencer by putting on a different T-shirt. I'm gonna grab my Chantel Martin package, rip it open. 
And if you're not familiar with Chantel Martin, Chantel Martin is a person, an influencer, an artist, and she overcome, overcame some adversities or just you know maybe some, uh, some challenges, nothing necessarily physical, but she overcame some, some challenges where folks did not, uh, did not think that she would be able to go to art school because they didn't think her art was that great. All right. So now I got on a shirt from Chantel Martin, directly from Chantel Martin, and it says make and share. So Chantel Martin, that's what she does now. She's able to make and share her artwork because she didn't listen to the people that told her that she couldn't do it. She went on ahead and did it. And that is kind of the start of, uh, of who my hidden figures are. Now, of course, my, my hidden figures that, that are kind of by default, immediate family. The favorites on my phone, my favorites in my life, my wife, my sons, the heirs to the throne, definitely my hidden figures. And I'm, I'm around them all the time and just, they inspire me and they, they give me life. But as I mentioned, there's a couple, there's three people that I kind of started this whole month out with. And actually I started it uh, at the end, January 31st. I kind of hinted towards what was going to come up because even though I list them as my hidden figures. I don't really have a lot of personal interaction with any of them. Maybe Chantel Martin the most, but my, my three celebrity hidden figures would be D1, who is a, a, a hip hop artist extraordinaire, and he's, he's trying to be real, be righteous, and be relevant. And then number two, Chantel Martin, no particular order. Chantel Martin, artist extraordinaire. She makes and shares. And all of these folks you can check out online. Just Google D1, D-E-E-1, -E Chantel Martin, S-H-A-N-T-E-L-L, -L, Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N. And it's interesting, she says that she was born to be an artist because art, Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N, art is actually in her name. So the third celebrity, my hidden figure, is Afro, A-F-R, Dash O, Afro, all flows reach out. If you got a chance to see Jimmy Kimmel, it wasn't Jimmy Kimmel, it was, it was, uh, was it Jimmy Kimmel? No, no, it was Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon, Afro was on Jimmy Fallon, and he did the segment called Box of Freestyle, where Jimmy Fallon reached into a box and handed it to Afro, and Afro would just freestyle on whatever happened to be pulled out of the box. So. I, I commend them and, and I recommend if you, if you are looking for some sort of something different, D1, Chantel Martin, Afro. And, and I, I don't know, I, I should be cautious on using that word different, but I tell you, I enjoy them that they are positive role models and influencers. And I definitely suggest that you get to know them and get to know what they had to offer. And, as I continue, the, the folks that I, that, I, that I say are my hidden figures are, are people that in some way have influenced me. And, I, and I'll say that again, you know, they, they definitely influenced me. But moving on, Baba Kurt Stanford, Baba of Honor in this little particular episode of My Hidden Figures is Brother Kurt Stanford. Kurt Stanford, I love Kurt Stanford. If you don't know Kurt Stanford, you need to know Kurt Stanford. Now, I'll say that the rest of these folks are, well, no, not based out of Cincinnati. Anyway, Kurt's based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, where I'm at. Kurt Stanford, he used to host this program on WAIF 88.3 FM in Cincinnati called African Perspectives on the News. That was his passion. That was his baby. And, and that was his gift to the community, African Perspectives on the News. And that was a labor of love. He put in work, years, decades of work in that program. And it was monumental and in, influential. And it just took regular news stories, or not necessarily regular news stories, but it just put that African perspective on the news. And, and I thought that was, that was amazing that he was able to just spend so much time just filtering through various news stories and, and putting them back in a way that, putting them back out in a way that felt important to me that when I listened, I felt that the news stories were directed to me, to help me 
in my life. And, and Kurt Stanford, I mean, that's just Baba of honor. Man, Kurt Stanford, that's, that's wow. I, I can't say enough about Kurt Stanford. I, I haven't said enough about Kurt Stanford. He, he is a man to know, and um, I'm just sorry that I haven't got to see him as much as I would like to in, in, these, in these past years. But he's a, he's a good man. My next person, Julene Yancey, also on WAIF 88.3 FM in Cincinnati for a long time. And she did a show called People's Poetry, and her and Kurt Stanford were right in the, in the legendary Friday night programming block. That's when all the cultural, culturally rich programs would come on at one time on WAIF 88.3 FM in Cincinnati. If you don't know about WAIF, it's an all-volunteer operated community radio station where you are the programmer program director. You are the music director. You are the programmer. You are responsible for all your content. And it is, their, their tagline is, what radio was meant to be. And WAIF just, just increased their power. So they are all over the place, all over this area, this greater Cincinnati area. So you can tune in, 88.3 FM in Cincinnati, if you are in the greater Cincinnati area. And Julian Yancey used to run this program called People's Poetry. And she would bring young poets and just, just amateur poets and professional poets on her show to read poetry over the radio. And those two programs, just, just people's poetry and African perspectives on the news, that in my opinion, that is, that is the real magic of radio. That exemplifies the real magic of radio. Because if you haven't heard me mention this before, I, I believe that radio can be magical. And, and the magic of that radio is, is the fact that, that Wherever you are, you can turn it on and, and it can follow you. You can be in the bathroom, in the shower, you can be in your car, you can be at work and have the radio up on the shelf. And wherever you are, the radio can come with you. And I believe that, that we should be able to take college classes, take educational courses just by listening to the radio. Now, I don't know if that'll ever come to fruition, but that is just maybe a, a pie in the sky, a dream that I, I have had and that I believe in the magic of radio. And Julian Yancey is a queen on the radio, and Baba Kurt Staniford is a king on the radio, and it is, it is, it is just uh, sad to me that I don't get to see them and, and hug on them and love on them as, as much as, as I would like to, because they, they definitely brought that, that creativity and that energy and that magic to the airwaves. And I, I did then, and I always will appreciate what they have done here in the city of Cincinnati. On to the next, Ron Mack. Let me tell you, let me tell you, Ron Mack. Ron Mack, from, from what, what was it? It wasn't, uh, it wasn't players at large. That was Tony Orso and them. It was players for life. And his group, his hip-hop, his rap group, they made waves here in the city of Cincinnati. But, but, but Ron Mack, continues to this day to just be out there and um, just supporting the community and just, just, you know, everywhere, I won't say everywhere, but many places where I've been, I, I, I just, I stumble on pictures and realize that Ron Mack was in the room. I remember back when, when EPMD, Eric and Parrish making dollars, back in the golden age of hip hop, when they came here to Cincinnati, for whatever reason, we wound up in their hotel room, and I got pictures of, of Ron Mack and, and Danny O, rest in peace, and EPMD, Scotty Boy, all of these, these folks in the hotel room, and uh, Ron Mack was there. I, I remember even going skating, and Ron Mack had on a fat gold chain and a Cincinnati jacket, and I was pretending to be his bodyguard, and we just walked around like he was a superstar. You know what? Not like he is a superstar, but he is a superstar. And I, I admire that brother, and I'm just, I'm just glad to know him. And uh, what was another, situ another situation? So many people. NWA came to town, and Ron Mack, we went down to the Riverfront Coliseum some kind of way. Ron Mack was in the room, and I got pictures at home with <laughs> Ron Mack and, and uh, like I said, EPMD, NWA. Ron Mack is the man. He continues to be the man. And I'll, I'll quote Ron Mack and say, Ron Mack is the man I just told you. All right? Look out for that, brother. Next in line is Desi Crawl. Desiree, we just call her Desi. Desi Crawl is like the, the, the queen of skating. 
She is the, the curator of the roller skating movie, movement and industry, not industry, but the, the roller skating movement that is still in existence today. And roller skating was hot at one point, you know, everybody's doing it. And, and you know, people, everybody has those stories. You go to, you know, birthday parties when you're young or whatever. And you go to some roller skating rink and everybody has cake and go out there and fall down with those rental skates. And, and there was a time, you know, maybe 80s, 80s when roller skating was hot. It's like everybody, everybody was going skating. And I'll probably say that some of those people that were going skating in the 80s and 90s are still skating today. And it just, you know, for some folks, they just kind of tapered off. They just don't do it anymore. But it's still out there. It is still like a, almost like an underground movement. And if you have any questions, if you need something to know, if you, if you need some information about roller skating, Desi can tell you all about it. And Desi has, let me not say she can tell you all about it, but her, her website can tell you all about it, skategroove.com. She is the curator of this whole movement, and, and that's where she keeps all the information at is skategroove.com. So if you're all around the country, all around the United States, if you need to know where to go, where to skate, where to roller skate, go to skategroove.com. Desi is the curator of that site, webmaster, and she used to work for Nassau. That's, that's a power hitter right there. Power roller, Desi. All right, and, and then this next group, my hidden figure, is the Watusi tribe. Now, the Watusi tribe from Cincinnati, not only did they just come together as, as a unit and, and try to bring culturally enriching music and messages through beats and rhymes, but they did so many things, and, and even now, they are on a path, some of their members are on a path to, to bring about a documentary that discusses and describes the whole hip-hop and music scene in the city of Cincinnati and how it grew and where it came from and, and who played a part, how many pieces of the puzzle were required to, to build that whole image of hip-hop in, in this whole Midwestern regional area this greater Cincinnati area. And I was just with them just recently and just did a, a, a wonderful interview with DJ Rude, Judy Jones from J. Jones Entertainment. <laughs> and, uh, oh man, and, and Chip Allen, who was uh, formerly with a group called The Movies and now works for Yamaha. And it was, so, it was so much food for my soul to not only just, I'm, I'm honored and, and, and privileged that they even just invited me to just be a part of that, that interview and that, that movement and, and hopefully this upcoming documentary series or movie that, that will, will come out somewhere. I, I was honored and privileged that they asked me, but just to be there, just to be kind of a fly on the wall, just for them to ask me questions and for me to provide answers, but to listen to, to Chip Allen provide his, his side of the story and his piece, where he was selling equipment to, to people out there trying to, trying to do something in music, and, and to hear DJ Rude talk about the, the, times that were, he, the times and places where he DJed, and then to hear Judy Jones, they call her Mama J, to hear her talk about working at art distribution and her m making those records, promoting the records that came out during that, that whole time when, when hip hop was growing and, and people were not sure and on you know, what to consume, what record to purchase, what should I buy, what, what do I do, how many units should I sell. And, and in that, that, that whole time that we were together, it was just, I said it before, it was food for my soul just to be in that room and hear all, and hear all those stories being shared. And it just took me back, back to a time that was, that was happy and free and, and, and experimental and exploratory and, and just a, a time of good old beats and rhymes. And, you know, just like we came together, hopefully you came together and, and watched or listened to this, this presentation of My Hidden Figures for 2018. I hope that it just maybe encourages you out there to just maybe look around you, 
and, and find your own hidden figures because I, I found them all around me. I just, it's like looking up at the, at the stars at night on a, on a warm summer night. There's so many stars in the sky, you can't count them. And that's how I feel when I look around, just around me. There are so many stars in my life, so many hidden figures. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do them all. I can't tell you about them all. But I'll take every day in February if I can, and this is, it is a labor of love. It is a labor of love for me to sit down and just think about the few people that have, have it, not, not the few people, the many people that have impacted me and, and, and have had a, a positive influence on my life. And I find that I, I sit down and I'll randomly pick a person. And when I do that, then I, I have to think of, I don't have to, but I just think of all the positive things. Just what I just said. All the positive things about the people that, that I have mentioned here. And I just, I don't know, however many, five, I guess. You know, but I do that for the every day in the day of February. And so for this whole month, I am just thinking positively and, and having good thoughts and, and just in a, in a place of bliss where it really means something to me. Black History Month in February means a lot more to me now. It means a lot more to me because of this, this movement that, I, that I'm just trying to start. Just, you know, in my arm, if it catches on, that would just be great. It would just be great. But that's, you know what, I'll, I'll leave you with that, that that's what this presentation is about, is I'm just sharing with you some of the folks that have impacted me in my life. And maybe you, you could do the same. Just look around and, and find somebody who influences you and makes you feel good and maybe pointed you in the right direction. But that's going to do it. I, you know what? I watched YouTube for a whole year just kind of checking on some things. And I, I, <laughs> I said to myself, I was going to have a different type of presentation. I was going to make it go faster. I, I, I watched the last, one, the last one from 2017, the My Hidden Figures presentation. And I, and I thought that I, I kind of I wanted myself to kind of move along. And so I said to myself, well, I'm going to try to move along this time because, you know, folks, you know, got to have that attention span. Got to, got to keep it moving, keep it moving, keep folks interested. <laughs> so I, hopefully I did that or maybe I just did that in the last few seconds. But, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to just end it. Again, be encouraged. I appreciate you. I'm ending like I used to end in my, one of my radio shows called The Real Butch Gibson Show and just try to bring people together online in the same way that, that or on the radio in the same way we try to bring together online or in this Black History Month. And so I'm about to get up out of here, but uh, stay black till we get back. Stay white. It's all right. Whatever color the rainbow that you see when you look in the mirror, we're all one race, the human race, under one God. Until we meet again, my brothers, my sisters, peace. I love you. I'm out. Assalamu alaikum.